So this is just a brief talk about how people overly are too negative or positive about a subject and we need regulations on these things, but they need to be more sensible and logic based or our discussions about them. Um, I'll be going much more in depth about each of these subjects and other subjects where we need much more nuances in later videos, but this is just a quick overview of a couple examples and how it's led to whack ideas and policies. One thing I want to point out is, first example, genetically engineered things. People are usually totally against it or for it. Well, you can't be totally against it. In no way is that a good idea. Almost all insulin used is made, especially in the US and worldwide, is made from genetically engineered bacteria. Before that, we had to get from dead pigs, dead cows, or dead human beings. Not all people could get from dead pigs, and dead pigs did not give the best insulin. It's not like human insulin. Dead cows, a little better, still not good enough. Dead human beings, super expensive, super rare, and you need multiple dead bodies. You need tens, to, tens of bodies to treat one person for a little bit. Yeah, it's not practical. Now, over 2. million U.S. adults use deep bacteria to produce insulin for them. And this insulin keeps them alive. Yeah, we would, without genetic engineering, over 3 million U.S. adults would just be dead. The vaccine for hepatitis B uses genetically engineered organisms and many more in development. And these are the only ways we know how to produce any of these drugs. This does not include um, a bunch of cancer drugs, a bunch of other drugs out there, all used to neck and yet bacteria or protests or fungi. And, um, but there's also a huge downside in genetic engineered things and genetics in general is people have been making genetic engineered crops and some people think this is going to lead to a revolution in agriculture, making agriculture more productive and better. But many of them have been released into the environment and it's really messed up some local environments. It's really hard to tell the exact extent, but we found that wild maize in Mexico, which is sacred to indigenous people there, have been contaminated with BT corn, which is corn that leases, made by Monsanto, which leases, their, which leases a pesticide, and it really hurts these native spiritual organisms, but it might be also threatening native creatures and native insects. We've seen similar cases with canola seeds. There's no exact number about how much are in the wild. We've seen weeds are picking up that are not even related to plants because plants can breed much more easily in between ones than animals. Um, it's a huge concern and that's people giving it like different names like genetic contamination, pollution, genetic invaders. I don't think it's really a standardized name, but it's a huge problem that we have to think about when approving genetically engineered things. There's a huge problem with monopolies. Um, genetically engineered ones oftentimes cost five times more expensive crops than normal crops, and poor farmers might just be at go of business. And some of these crops aren't even fertile, so you have to keep buying it every single year from the manufacturers, making the Monsanto and other big organizations even more powerful. And small-scale farmers go out of business, and may even starve, and it's been linked to deaths and suicides in India and a couple other places worldwide where people have gone into debt because they could not afford seeds. So yes, there is a lot of negative. Maybe you can make more nutritional plants in the future, but not yet. However, we can be a little too harsh on genetic engineering on this point because we do plenty of radical breeding already of plants really radical bleeding. Um, this includes just radical traditional bleeding, but sometimes people literally hit plants with stuff to mutate them from radiation to chemical agents, and sometimes they hit it to make it have twice amount of chromosomes, so like um, recessive ones disappear or they make bigger seeds, or half the amount or make them half load so recessive genes can spread out more, and they do these super quick mutation readings, which is a lot worse than you would think normal breeding because you on genetic engineering is like hitting it 
with a very precise precise thing compared to this one. It's more like hitting it with a cannon. And there's a lot of changes that make these plants less nutritional or less sometimes less good for the environment even. Like they suck out more nutrients or they can make them crop with resistant pesticides, but it might make them resistant in ways that are worse. So these other alternative breeding methods might actually be worse. And these ones have been since the 1900s to 20, to the 20th, 1900s, sometimes them even beforehand. And they're also to be part of discussion. Um, it was it. And we need to look at preserving old types of crops and preserving biodiversity and passing laws like the common sense, like crops that release pesticides and herbicides that might be harmful might, are totally different than ones that might be more nutrition. One's probably a lot more harmful environment than the other one. Ones that try to grow better and might use less fertilizer might be better for the environment than ones that instead grow faster but use up more nutrition. So we can't just classify all these genetic games and things together and have just one simple law. And what about monopolies? We need to talk about monopolies and stuff like that. And I'm not even getting to human genetics right now, which is a whole different discussion that sometimes I'll touch upon. But I hope you see that these genetic engineering debates, we can't just be one side or another side. We need nuances. And I'm not even including research that's helped many people with diseases and other things. Nuclear. Well, I'm not going to go too in depth in nuclear because a lot of you guys probably know the problems with nuclear energy with um, radioactive waste, bombs, safety, meltdowns. But nuclear power plants, and not the nuclear power plants usually to make energy, but like uh, mini scale ones, are used for radioisotope labeling. This is used in PET imaging for cancer, for a lot of radioact for a lot of cancer studies, but also like if you actually have cancer, figure out where your tumors are and much, much more with the medical industry. It saved millions of, to tens of millions of li cancer patient lives. And it's yearly use. Some radiation therapies use radioactive drugs and um, legit. But yeah, again, nuclear waste. I, but I do want to repeat that this is studying nuclear ones to make these nuclear radioactive substances. And these radioactive substances are not used to make power on the power scale and a lot smaller. And I'm pretty much against nuclear energy. I think renewable energy is a lot better. It takes a nuclear power plant 10 to 15 years to make. And renewable energy, you can make it so much quicker and it's progressing so much faster. And also storage and distribution technology. So I really don't think, by the time I think nuclear power plants are built, I think the better ideas are going to already be out there. And most ideas can be solved already without nuclear, frankly, if we had a heavy investment. But that's a side. Another quick example is where we have need more nuances is that people are either super pro weed or super against weed. Well, weed, it can help with so many disorders, anxiety, depression, the immune system, pain disorders, genetic gastrointestinal disorder, disorders, GI, it's a symbolized GI. Um, it can help with epilepsy, and it's been proven. It doesn't help everyone with this disorder, so don't go piecing around to because it helps you. But, and also like criminalization of it has led to so many awful things and sales. But when you're on it, you still can be somewhat out of it. Um, you still probably, if you're really high, you probably soon all, do equipment. The same is true of alcohol, but the same is true of lack of sleep and stuff like that. You just need people to be sensible about it, when to use it, when not to use it. We've been finding that weed now has certain um, negative side effects on some people. Now, everything has bad things. People have problems eating gluten. People have problems eating wheat. People have problems eating too much calories. People have problems eating too much carbs. People have problems if you drink too much water. And different people have it differently, but any food or anything you ingest or drink can cause problems and need medication. This does not mean we should make it illegal. This just means you have to think about it. And people need to be aware of it that in some people, it helps GI issues, and some people it can cause severe nausea, diarrhea, stomach issues if used long-term 
or have used a lot. This is a fraction of the percent of the population, and we don't know how common it is, but something to be aware of and to look into. Definitely. Asthma. Well, smoking, smoking any substance can exacerbate lung problems and cause asthma, and it can affect people with asthma around you. We need places where we don't smoke, simply for people that have these issues, and we need to be aware of the people around us if you do smoke weed so they don't have lung issues. And also strong smells can irritate people. And the modern day weed has much more THC, which is psychoactive and doesn't have the same med ben medical benefits, than CBD, which has much more medical benefit. So we need to talk that it's a different breed. I think it should be legal. I think we should use it more for medicine, but be aware not all weed is the same. There's medical weed, there's different types of weed, there's recreational weed, and we do need to more carefully educate people about the health issues and examine them so that people can be healthy and use it as a legit medical treatment for many, many, many problems. And there's also always the problem of people being psychologically addicted and taking it instead of going to therapy or something to treat a problem. However, we don't have enough therapy already in the world and other things. So this is just a brief kind of ramble that, yeah, sometimes we need to stop painting something as black and white, and maybe we need more nuanced regulations instead of going one extreme or another extreme. Thank you very much. Please subscribe, like, comment if you so feel so, and also recommend this to other people. I am going to go in depth, much more in depth about this subject and later subjects later on. I just wanted to share some feelings. Thank you.